We'd like to thank ComNexus and the uh, Cyber Security Cluster for inviting us to talk about intelligent agents, which is an innovation that we think will be disruptive to the cybersecurity market. So, intelligent agents are autonomous software entities that achieve their goals a lot like a human. They learn, they adapt, and they react to the environment. These agents are rational. They learn without supervision or programming. We think they're a disruptive innovation because they create an entirely new class of software that can learn like a human, almost, at a tiny fraction of the cost. And in this case, we're going to take the example of a small child learning to read. Imagine if a small, if your, your computer could read information just like a small child. So cybersecurity is a vast subject. Uh, it involves machines and humans, and we know that machines can protect themselves through really well-engineered physical devices and very strong software programs. But we also know that humans are very adaptive, intelligent, and creative, and are very clever in how they can get around these machine defenses. So we're going to take one tiny example of how can we understand human communications in emails and Twitter and so forth. And there's a lot of use cases for this. Uh, we're going to look at information leaks uh, specifically. So the problem, fundamentally, in cybersecurity is that humans can't keep pace with the growth of data. Data grows logarithmically. Over here on the left, we see data from Gartner that shows that data grows at about 50-fold over a five-year period from 2011 to 2015. Over on the right, we see the familiar curve from Moore's Law, which is the capacity of technology, and that pace of growth outstrips the human learning curve by a lot. And so this gap between human learning and uh, the capacity of technology expands over time, and that gap creates opportunities and risks. Since all technology enables intent, this gap can be exploited for both good and evil. So the opportunity is to build intelligent agents to enable humans to bridge this gap. AI1's intelligence is called biologically inspired intelligence, and our big breakthrough was autonomic intelligence. This is the first step towards strong intelligence. What we provide is an application programming interface. It is a tool. It is not a solution. And our tool allows you to build disruptive softwares. Let's take one example that we've built to prove our case. So the use case is finding information leaks on a network. And let's take the case, of, take the military case, of classified information. And classified information can be a lot like artistic genius. Not easy to define, but really easy to identify if a human sees it. So just like Michelangelo can look at a block of granite and see David, we can look at blocks of information and see lots of different things. So humans are good at this. And it takes an expert human oftentimes to look into these things because it's hard to program software for every possible permutation of an idea. So the, this makes big data. Uh, I think we all agree that data is big and it's very dark. And it's like a mountain that holds countless potential shapes. And each shape can be represented with a different set of words, if you will. Trouble is, a few words can express millions of different ideas in countless different ways. Let's take an example. The failure of keyword search is that it looks for words, not ideas. So let's say I'm looking for somebody else, not me, named Olin Hyde. If I type in Olin Hyde, I get 19.8 million results, and all of the top results are the wrong person. It's me. So my next step would be to start guessing more words, and as I guess more keywords or start eliminating keywords, I might be losing the really interesting bits that I'm looking for. So most government agencies and most corporations solve it by hiring more analysts. And we think this is not scalable. This is not, not the right approach. A more interesting approach would be to build intelligent agents that can detect ideas with fingerprints. So let's take the case of a classified document. Humans have combined words to form ideas. We can give it to an autonomous agent. This agent then sees how every word is used with every other word and it generates a fingerprint. And this fingerprint's a representation of knowledge of that document. We can then train the agent 
to look inside that fingerprint for specific ideas. So let's say we've got a document, classified document that has details for a Navy SEAL operation. Well, unlike other technologies, you can just give our technology just a couple examples and it will come up with an idea. If we give it, say, 10 from the Navy and from the Army and so forth, it will come up with a generalizable idea of what's a special forces action. And this may be the generalized shape that we're looking for in the data. So each agent can be very specialized. And so we could have a blue agent and a yellow agent, and where they intersect is actually a green agent. And this allows us to work at network scale. We can have millions of agents, each specialized in their own idea, and have them interact to do interesting things, such as find derivative intelligence, find early indicators of bad behavior, and so forth. So let's take an example that I think we're all familiar with of information leaking from classified sources to WikiLeaks. So that happens probably, let's say it takes two steps. I'm sending an email. Does my email contain classified information? As we showed earlier, yes. The fingerprint of my email has some similarities with that classified document. So it's that we either stop it or we're going to monitor it. What's really interesting about the agents is these fingerprints can be applied to more than just words in the English language. They're actually data agnostic. They can create a fingerprint for any language, whether it's Arabic, English, Urdu, whatever. And they also, we're using the word word in the computer science term, which they can actually be IP addresses. So in this case, we can see the email pattern of where it's gone to and who, who's, who's it followed creates its own fingerprint, a behavioral fingerprint. Combining these two together, we can say, okay, that email was intended for WikiLeaks and it contained reworded information, re reworded classified information. So that's a really important point, and we think that there's not many other ways to do this uh, at the current state of technology. So that's what we think is, is kind of interesting. So these intelligent agents work at machine speed and network scale. They make human analysts more powerful by allowing the analysts to do more interesting work. There's lots of different use cases. So, what's the impact for cybersecurity? We think cybersecurity is proportional to your position on the technology adoption curve. If you're over on the left, you're an innovator. If you're over on the right, you're a laggard. The innovators and the laggards differ by the questions they ask, the statements they make, how they look at the world. The innovators, this is where hackers and zero-day attacks and threats on the internet often come from. And they're not looking for validation or uh, other examples of people before them. They're experimenting. They're trying stuff new. And they're asking questions like, what can I do now? The people over on the right are oftentimes really concerned with validation and not so experimental. And they're oftentimes called victims. So here's something to scare the hell out of you. Pick a place that you think you are on the curve by the type of questions you ask. Now imagine that curve expanding at a rate that's proportional to information growth. And let's be conservative and say information is doubling every four years. That means your distance from innovator to where you are on the curve doubles every four years. And since technology enables intent, you have a choice. You can adopt early or accept the risks. So we're happy to do a demo at any time. Give us a call.